The aim of today's video is going to be showing you how to create this sort of a setup where you can select any of these objects and have complete procedural wires drooping down from these objects. More importantly, you can select any of the objects and duplicate it to create a new object and you will have automatic wires created within that object. Apart from that, you can actually control the number of wires by playing around with this factor over here to make much fewer wires or even much more wires and make it nice and dense. Apart from that, you can also change the wire slack, which means you can make them droop down even more or you can make them droop down less by playing around with this slack value. It doesn't have to be the same shaped objects. You can add in even new objects like this Suzanne over here and automatically Suzanne will also be connected into these points. So that's a really cool setup and I'm going to teach you how to do this in geometry nodes in today's video. So in our default scene, the first thing that we need to do is create objects from which the wires will fall. So let's use this default cube itself. Press G to just move it around and we'll press Shift D to add in a few more of these. Now we need to place all of these objects within a single collection. So let's shift select all of them and then press M and choose new collection. And then we can name this whatever we want. So I'll call this wire cable emitters. Once we're done setting that up, we can actually start off with the geometry node section. So we need an object for the geometry nodes. I'll add in a plane and I'll bring my cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window, after which I'll change it to the geometry node editor. Then I'll press this plus button to add in a new geometry node tree and I'll zoom in and start working with it. Now, the first thing that we need are the objects that are present in the collection. So we can take this collection and just drag and drop it into this particular geometry node tree. But apart from doing that, maybe you might want to set this up such that you can choose whichever collection you want. So I'll just remove this from here. And instead I'll take this and plug it into the group input. That way, if we actually go to the geometry node modifier, you can select the collection from here and you can change the collection whenever you please. So let's choose the cable emitters collection. Now, if I change these cubes around at any point of time, I want the updated position to be taken into consideration. So I'll choose relative in the object info. Apart from that, I'll also choose separate children so that each child is considered as a separate mesh. However, the instances over here are still going to be singular instances itself as in the entire cube will act as one single object. So if we were to press shift A and search for a distribute points on faces node, we would get points present on the faces, which you can see by plugging the points into the geometry. But the problem is that these points are not real geometry. So if we were to use a domain size and then find out the point count by using this point cloud and then just keeping this in here, you can see that the number of instances is coming out as three. So even if we take this point count and use it for something, so let's say we just add in some points by searching for points and using this as the count and we plug this in, you'll see that this says that the number is zero because even though this is points, we don't have a point cloud coming out from it. So instead of that, we have to press shift A and search for a realize instances node and plug that in right here. So now when we actually take a look at the points, we have 720 points and even the point count is 720, which means we have 720 points present right at the center over there. So now we don't want 720 points. We essentially want lines that will be connected between these points. So if between two points, we need one single line, the number of lines should be half the number of points. Since we're going to convert these points into lines, we're going to have to half this number. So we'll press shift A, search for a math node, plug that in right here and change this to divide and divide it by a value of two. So hopefully we're able to keep up with the train that's going on. We're taking in a collection, which is a bunch of geometries, and then we're going to realize the instances so that we can distribute a bunch of points on each of these faces and the points are real. Now we can find out the number of points that have been distributed on these faces and we can divide that by two and create that many numbers of points that are present in the center. Now on these points, we'll instance lines by pressing shift A and searching for an instance on points node and plugging a curve line into the instances. Now we can take this plug that in right there. And we should have the exact number of lines present right in the center over there as we require. Now we need to take the front part of each of these lines and place them on random points that were distributed on the faces. And then we have to take the ends of each of these curve and match them up with other points as well. Now we can do that in a very clever way. What we'll do is we'll sample the position for each of these points. So we'll press shift A and search for a sample index node. We'll plug that in here. And of course, we'll keep this train connected. And we're going to keep this from float to vector because we want to sample the position. So let's search for a position node. And instead of sampling the position for every index, we're actually going to sample it for random indices. So let's press shift A and search for a random value and change it from float to integer because indices are always integers. Now this max value has to be the max number of points that are created here and we have
have that number in this point count. So let's take this, plug that into the max value over there. And remember, if there are 720 points, the indices are going to go from 0 to 719. So this max value should also be 719. So to do that, we'll press Shift A and search for a math node, plug that in before the random value, and we'll change this from add to subtract, and we'll subtract a value of 1. Now we'll take this value, plug it into the index, and from this output, we should get random positions of each of these points. So we can use this to set the position of each of the points present from these lines that we created over here. So again, because they're instances, we can't control each point separate, as in we can't control the start position and the end position separately. So we need to again realize the instances once more and then press Shift A and search for a set position. Now we can change the position based on this value that we've sampled over here. And that way we should get exactly what we want. And that looks absolutely great. Of course, we can use this density to control the number of K that we have. So I want to be able to control this from this position right here. So let's take this density and plug that into the group input. Now I don't want to just call it density. I want to call it cable density. So I can go to the group tab on this side and I can choose density and rename this to cable density. Now that we have the cables set up, we can see that if we were to take any of these cubes and press shift D, new cables are formed automatically. Apart from that, as long as we are within this particular collection, we can add in any other shape as well. So we can press shift A and add in just as I showed you, maybe a Suzanne, or in this case, I'll use a UV sphere. If we were to take it, and move it into the cable emitters collection, automatically new cables will be formed to that particular object. Now this looks great, but there's much more that we need to do. So back in our geometry node for these cables, we have to start adding in some slack because right now these are straight lines that are being connected. So to convert these into nice drooping cables, we're going to use another set position, but we have to set the position for multiple points within this particular line. But right now the line does not have multiple points. It has one over here and one over there. So we can't give it a nice curve. So we need to resample before we set the position. So let's press Shift A and search for a resample curve node. Plug that in after the set position. And I want the shorter curves to have lesser points and the longer curves to have more points. So instead of count, I'll change it to length and I'll change the length to maybe 0.05 so that there's one point every 0.05 meters. Now I need to offset just the Z value, but I need to base this offset on the actual position along the curve. So to do that, I can search for a spline parameter node. And over there, we have this factor value. Now this factor goes from zero to one, and we can actually use that to change the position. However, if we were to get this from zero to one, we wouldn't be able to manipulate it such that the ends occur in the same way and the middle slacks down even more. So we can remap this to minus one to one such that the ends become the same value except with a negative sign which we'll remove using some more math operations. So let's press shift A and search for a map range node and plug the factor into the value. Now it's going to go from zero to one but the output we can make the two min to minus one. So now we have an output going from minus one to one. Apart from that, we know that the mathematical equation for a parabola is x squared is equal to y. So if we consider each of these to be the x values, we can simply square them and move them on the z value accordingly to get the drooping in a parabolic shape. Now I must be obliged to tell you that although we are going to be modeling a parabola in real life, the curve that's actually formed is not parabolic. It's called the catenary curve and it's actually a hyperbolic cosine function. Now that shape occurs because the potential energy will be least in that configuration. However, we're going to approximate it to a parabola and use x squared is equal to y or y squared is equal to x. And in this case, the factor squared is going to be equal to the z value. So let's press shift A and search for a math node and switch it to power and change the exponent to a value of two. So now when we take this, because the negative one squared will become a positive value, we automatically get it such that the ends move by the most and the value of zero moves the least. So we'll eventually get some sort of a curve like this if we were to plug this into the Z value. So let's press Shift A and search for a combined XYZ node and take this value and plug it into the Z component and then plug that into the offset. So now we are getting that exact shape as expected, but that actually moves the ends towards the top and the middle by nothing. We wanted it to be different. The ends should not move and the middle should move the most. So we can actually get that effect by using some more math. So right now, remember that this is going from a value of one to one and we're squaring it. One squared is still equal to one, which means this entire output is also moving by only one unit. So the max movement is one unit itself, which means this is going from one to zero back to one. If we were to take one minus that, we'd get zero to one to zero. So let's do that. Let's press shift A and search for a math node, change it from add to subtract and subtract one minus this value. So that way we have 
zero all the way to one all the way to zero but we wanted it to droop down so we can multiply that by minus one so that we get zero to minus one all the way to zero again so we're going to add in a math node change it to multiply and keep it at a value of minus one so now we have these nice drooping cables but we can control how much it droops by as well so for that we just duplicate this multiply node so press shift d and duplicate it right here and change this from minus one to any positive value so you can see how we can increase the drooping amount now i think this should also be controlled by an input over here so let's add in a group input node place that right here and take this and plug it into a new socket down here now we don't want to call this value so we'll call it slack amount now there's one last problem there are multiple lines that have been mapped to points on the same object itself and that's why we have cables that droop just like this. Now, some people might want cables like this, but I don't want cables to be present between the same object. All cables should be from one object to another object. Now, there's many ways in which you can mitigate that problem. The way I'm going to do that is by removing cables that are smaller than a certain length. So for that, I can shift this to the side, press shift A and search for a delete geometry and I'm going to place it right here. But I don't want to delete points. I want to delete splines. So I'll change this to spline. Then I want to select only splines that have less length. So I'm going to search for another spline length node and the length I'm going to have to compare with a certain value. So I'll search for a compare node and I'll take the length and say if the length is less than let's say 10 meters, then it should be deleted. So let's take this result, plug it into the selection. And now you can see we still have many of these curves. So let's start increasing this length and you can see that it slowly gets removed. So I want this to also be controlled by an input because if we were to start increasing the slack amount, these do come in again. So we have to start increasing this length once again to remove them. So that has to be controlled by another input parameter. So let's take this group input. And since there's nothing in between, let's just plug this into the group input right there and call this min distance. And now you have control over that as well. That's actually all there is for the base setup. The next thing that we can do is actually convert this to a real mesh. So let's search for a curve to mesh node, plug that in right here. For the profile curve, I'll use another curve circle itself. I'll take this curve, plug it into the profile curve and I'll reduce the radius to maybe 0.1 but again i want this to be controlled from right here so i'll take this plug it into the group input right there and i'll call this cable radius finally you could have the resolution as another input parameter but i'll just consider a resolution of 12 to be good for any scenario and that's actually all there is for this effect you have all the controls present right here and you can move these around and you can duplicate them to create newer versions that all get automatically connected. If the two are present too close, we won't have any between them. But as soon as you move them away, you'll have new cables formed between them as well. For most scenarios, we will have to mention some sort of material. So let's add in a set material node, plug that in right here. And for the material, we'll use that as another group input so that it can be controlled without having to enter into the geometry node tree. So plug that in right there and we'll leave it as cable material or material. It doesn't make too much of a difference. So with that, you can rename this to cable generator and you can go ahead and mark this as an asset. So hopefully this was a useful one and you can have a lot of fun playing around with this and creating sci-fi environments really quickly without having to do any amount of work. It looks the best when it's off in the background and the best part about this is that no matter how long you make it, the cables do remain. If you want to control another parameter such that longer cables are also deleted, you can always add that in by using another delete geometry and checking if the length is greater than a certain value. So there are a lot of tiny changes that you can make just like that but i'm going to leave all of that up to you and your requirements so have fun playing around with this and until my next video comes out tomorrow thank you so much for watching keep creating and don't forget to stay creative